Welcome to Facing South Florida. I'm Jim DeFede, and this week I spoke to Broward County Commissioner Jared Moskowitz, who is running for Congress to replace Ted Deutsch. Moskowitz's Democratic primary opponents have been attacking Moskowitz because he served as the Director of Emergency Management in the DeSantis administration. Now, we talk about that later in our interview, but we began with the economy, and I asked him if Democrats have been late to acknowledge voters' concerns over inflation. Yes, I think we were late, uh, and that's okay. We can acknowledge when we, we make, a, we make a, a mistake, but it was really a communications mistake, which, listen, if you, if you talk to a lot of Democrats out there, they'll think we need to do better collectively at communicating. But yes, we, talk, we started talking about it too late. Listen, people understand that it's a complicated issue. Ukraine, COVID, the world shutting down, China, Saudi Arabia, but, but they, want to un they want you to understand that they're struggling. They want to hear you understand that when gas is $5 and rents up 40% and they can't find the items that they need or eggs and chicken and milk are all more expensive, they want, you, they want to hear from their leaders that, and acknowledge that it's happening. And then they want to hear what you're doing to try to fix it, even if those things aren't instant. Uh, and we, we just didn't, we, did, we, we wanted to because we're in power. It's not our fault that it's happening. Democrats didn't cause this, but because we're in power, uh, they're, you know, we, we, didn't, we didn't want to talk about it, but we don't bear responsibility for what's happening, but we do bear responsibility to try to talk about it and fix it. All right, so let's put who's responsible aside for a second, and let's talk about what we can do, what you think Congress should be doing to fix the problem, what you think the president should be doing to fix the problem. Give me your idea of some suggestions, some actual tangent, you know, some specific suggestions that could fix this. Yeah, so listen, uh, there are a couple things. First, let's talk about the housing issue. I think we should bring back the rental assistance program. I think the rental assistance program was tremendously uh, successful. I think it kept a lot of people in their homes uh, in this area of Broward County in Florida, rent is up 35 to 40%. A lot of those people don't have money in their savings accounts or 401k just to go, you know, find six or $700 a month. But if we keep them in their homes, it's probably going to be less expensive than if they leave and wind up in another government program. So I think we got to do that. I also think we got to do what the president has been doing, which is use every button, every lever of power to try to bring gas prices down, including going to Saudi Arabia. I supported that trip. You know, you, you, you do what you have to do. The world has a lot of strange bedfellows. Uh, and so I supported him going to Saudi Arabia and trying to get uh, OPEC to pump more. I think, I think that was good. I also think where you can, where it's environmentally friendly, not drilling off the coast of Florida, but where you can, where we can do it in a environmentally friendly way, I do uh, think looking at uh, land leases uh, for the expiration of uh, additional uh, fossil fuels Again, where uh, it's environmentally friendly, we can do it. There are tactics that they can use, like horizontal drilling and things of that nature, uh, but not in an area uh, that we're going to disturb wildlife. Well, let me hold you there. Let me let me hold you there because you, you raised three issues, and I want to go back through them a little bit because you talk about. Let's start with the first one. You said the rental assistance program. What you're talking about is, an, again, another major infusion of government tax dollars going into the public. I, I don't know if you've been watching what's happening in Washington, but there seems to be no appetite to do more spending at this time. And there are those who believe that it was all the spending we did, which led directly to the inflation we're now seeing. Well, listen, I, I do subscribe to the theory that when you pump $6 trillion into an economy very quickly, that can add to inflation. So remember, Trump did a COVID package that was about three and a half trillion dollars and then Biden did one. So, you know, both parties infused money into the economy because there was a thought process that we got to make sure we don't go into a depression. And so that was what the talk was. And so both parties subscribed to that nature. So now that they, Republicans want to try to blame Joe Biden, it's just, it's just not, it's hypocritical. Uh, now, uh, so here's what I do think we should be doing. We're not pumping money into the, into the economy that would add to an inflationary period. Housing is already inflated. You got supply and demand issues. And so what we would be doing is that money wouldn't, wouldn't go into the economy except for going into the housing issue by keeping people in their homes. You'd be having to take government money from another program anyway uh, if these people wind up having to lose their apartment and wind up in a homeless shelter or wind up somewhere else. So government, it's a government problem no matter what we do. So we're going to be spending money regardless, saying we don't want to spend new money 
it, it's not being genuine. It's disingenuous to say that uh, it won't cost us any money if we just leave the situation uh, alone. Well, let me jump in again and let's move through because I want to go through the things you said. You mentioned you supported the president's trip to Saudi Arabia. You talked about how there comes a time when you have strange bedfellows. Should the United States make a strange bedfellow of uh, Venezuela? Should, Should we, we be working with Maduro now to no, bring in Venezuelan oil? No. I mean, look, you don't have to work with everybody, okay? Uh, and so, no, we shouldn't swap one dictator in Russia for another one in Venezuela. I know the Biden administration was looking at that. I uh, publicly opposed it when they were. Uh, and so I'm glad that they haven't pursued that any further because, you know, that's just going to cause more problems down the line. And so, no, I don't I don't support uh, switching out Russia for Venezuela, but I do support the president going to Saudi Arabia and trying to get more money, uh, more uh, gas uh, on oil out of OPEC. But one of the other reasons, Jim, that I do think we got to look from in an environmental way uh, is we, we do have to become more energy independent in this country. Administration after administration after administration has been talking about it. We got to do it with obviously green technology, you know, solar, wind, but we also have to recognize that th that alone can't power the country. Uh, and so I do support uh, in areas that we will not disturb the environment and use technology to do so, uh, you know, uh, exploring more, uh, you know, fossil fuels. What about the Keystone Pipeline? Republicans have tried to make it seem as if the president's decision to terminate the Keystone Pipeline is one of the reasons why. It's not, it's not you know, Ukraine. It's not the Russian sanctions. It's not that with the world shut down for two years and that China continues to open and close. No, it's none of that. It's the Keystone Pipeline. Voters are smarter than that. You know, that's a red herring. News this week that uh, President Biden has COVID. They White House says that his symptoms are, are mild. They are not, um, they don't seem overly concerned, but it will once again raise questions about whether or not uh, the currently the oldest living president in U.S. history should run for a second term in two years. I realize you've got to worry about your election first, but where do you come down? Do you believe that Joe Biden should run again in 2024? Well, first of all, obviously, we you know wish the president well. I heard he's on Paxlovid. Uh, it's good that we have new therapeutics, uh, you know, so that you can take these things. The president is vaccinated, so the president should be fine between being vaccinated uh, and taking the antiviral Paxlovid. Uh, I do think the president should run again. Obviously, that's the president's decision. Uh, he doesn't have to make that decision at this moment in time. But let me remind people that there are two key factors on why I come to that conclusion. One, he's the only person to beat Donald Trump. And two, if you look at all polling, he is still beating Donald Trump, even with Joe Biden's approval ratings being very low. He is still beating Donald Trump in a head to head. And with Donald Trump on the precipice of announcing potentially running for president, I think, you know, the idea of making sure Donald Trump, one of the greatest, in my opinion, is domestic terrorist threats that we face him becoming president again. That's why I think Joe Biden uh, needs to run, run for president again. again. And if Donald Trump doesn't run? Should Joe Biden, are you saying that if Donald Trump does not run, then someone other than Joe Biden should run? Got to look at the data. I mean, at this point in the, in the country, <clears throat> Democrats are looking at that stuff. I mean, they really are. Well, let's look at let's look at some of the data. I mean, the New York Times poll that recently came out said that um, I think it was uh, it was upwards of 90 percent of primary Democratic primary voters under the age of 30 did not want Joe Biden running again. Uh, the the numbers are like in the 60s in general for Democratic primary voters. There There is a real generational problem that the Democratic Party seems to have in terms of so many of its leaders, whether it's whether it's Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi, the number two, Steny Hoyer. I mean, you're, you're talking about almost a quarter century between those three people. Yeah, I didn't realize Mitch McConnell and Donald Trump were in their 40s. I mean, come on, both parties have this issue. Let's turn to the campaign right now. You're often criticized for not being more outspoken against Ron DeSantis, that that you somehow feel beholden to him to not speak out as directly as you could or should in challenging him on some of the issues. Tell me what how you what you make of this. Well, listen, you know, I'm running for Congress and I'm telling people why I should go to Congress. What's weird is none of my opponents are telling them 
telling the voters why they should go to Congress and why they're qualified and what they want to do. All they're all they're interested in telling them why Jared Moskowitz shouldn't go. It's a it, it, it just bizarre. Listen, I, I don't hide from the fact that I took the appointment from Governor Ron DeSantis. I didn't support him. I didn't vote for him. And in the beginning, I told him, no, I didn't want the job. Uh, but, you know, I talked to the Parkland families who visit their kids in the cemetery. And I realized, like, you know, this is a nonpartisan agency and I should go and I should do the job. And I handed out 85 million masks. I tested tens of millions of people. And I, you know, prioritized seniors with the vaccines and made sure that we can get into the minority community. This idea that I'm not critical of the governor is just not accurate. And it's not accurate, not just of the governor, but of Republican policies. By the way, my competitors weren't critical of the governor until they got in the race because all of a sudden they just found politics. Uh, but I've been very critical about what happened last session. <clears throat> First of all, when I was there, I fought the governor on masks. I publicly changed my name to Jared Maskowitz. It got national news. Uh, I mandated masks in my building. We were the only agency in his administration to do so. I mandated testing in my building. We were the only uh, agency in his administration uh, to do so. Uh, and when it came time to, when I left, uh, and it came time to the, the session that just took place with Don't Say Gay and the Stop Woke Act uh, and you know the book nonsense and uh, targeting the, the trans community. I've been outspoken on all of those policies, but Democrats miss the point here. While yes, Ron DeSantis is the governor, the entire Republican Party of Florida is supporting this stuff. They're voting on it before it gets to his desk. So I've been challenging Republicans publicly. I've been a Democrat my whole life. I've never voted for a Republican. I'm endorsed by Hillary Clinton. I worked in Al Gore in Al Gore's office when I was in college. Uh, I mean, you know, this, these attacks on me are, are, are just political nonsense. It's what, what people actually don't like about politics. You know, I served the state, I served our residents, uh, and whether Ron DeSantis runs for re-election or Ron DeSantis runs for president, I will, of course, oppose the governor and support Democrats.